Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III. We will study today Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 20, the gospel reading for Proper 9, Series C. And because this is a longer reading, we will simply go through the translation, and then I'll have a few textual notes at the end. So let's begin with verse 1. After these things, and then we have the verb, on a dake knew me. This is an aorist, which means to show forth, to display, to make public, especially a person's appointment to an office. So we could translate this, the Lord, the subject of the verb, the Lord appointed publicly 72 others. So hebdomekanta, and also bringing in the duo, and then heteros. Uh, 72 others, and he sent them on a duo, duo, two by two, literally, pro prosopu autu, before his face. You would simply say, before him, into every city or town and place where he was about, so Amelin, he was about to go. Verse 2. And he said to them, we notice that we have here men and death. So we could translate this. On the one hand, the harvest is polus, much, bountiful, plentiful. But on the other hand, the ergatai, the workers, the laborers are few. And then we have the verb deomai, which takes the genitive. And so this is an imperative. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, hopus, that workers, and then the verb ekbalo, which is literally drive out or cast out, that he would cast out workers into his harvest. But usually that's translated, he would send forth, send out workers into his harvest. All right, verse 3. We have the verb hupago, an imperative, go or go forth. Behold, I send you as arnas, as lambs into the midst of lucon, wolves. Verse 4. The first verb there is bastazo. This is an imperative. Do not carry a balantion. Now, this would be a purse or a money bag, nor Tehran, nor a traveler's bag, nor hupodemata, sandals, and no one along the way, so kata tein hodon, along the way, and then the verb at the end, aspazo, this is an aorist subjunctive, greet, and do not greet anyone along the way. Verse 5. into whatever. So, hein de an, into whatever, and then oikion, house, you should enter. First say, peace, a reine, be to this house. Verse 6. And if a son of peace, so we us a reine, if a son of peace should be there, and then we have the verb, Upon a paomai. Uh, this is a future passive, rest upon. And if a son of peace should be there, your peace, so going to the end here, a, a reine, humon, your peace will rest on him. Now continuing, but if not, to you, and then at the end of verse 6, the verb anacompto, which means to return. To you it will return. Verse 7. In that house remain. So, en aute te oikia. In that house remain. So the verb there is meno. This is an imperative, remain. And then we have 
participles, eating and drinking the things from them. So para here, with the genitive, has the meaning of from, from them. For axios, worthy is the ergates, the worker of his misthu, of his pay, of his wages. And then the last portion of verse 7, do not, and the verb would be metabino, this is an imperative, leave, depart, do not depart from house to house. Verse 8, and into, and then hain on whatever city you should enter, and they should receive you. The verb here is dechomai, and this means receive or welcome. And they should receive you, and then isthite, eat the things placed before you. Uh, the verb there is paratithemi. This is a participle. Uh, set something, you know, something is set before a person. The things set before you. Verse 9. And heal the sick. So, tus asthenes, the sick, en aute, in it. And say to them, we go to the end here for the subject, he basileia tu theu. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Verse 10. And into whatever city you should enter, and they do not welcome you. They do not receive you. Departing into its streets, say. Then verse 11. Kai here has the sense even. Even the dust which is, and then the verb kolao. Uh, this is an aorist passive participle to cling to. Even the dust which is clinging to us from your city. And then we have the verb apomasomai. Uh, we wipe off. We wipe off against you. So to repeat the first part of verse 11. Even the dust which is clinging to us from your city, and then ace to spotos, to the feet, understood, to our feet, and then the verb, we wipe off against you. Plain, but this, no, genoskita, that the kingdom of God has come near. Verse 12, I say to you that for Sodom in that day, and then we have the word anektos. This is a comparative, and that would mean here more bearable or more endurable. It will be than for that city. So to repeat verse 12, I say to you that for Sodom in that day, it will be more bearable than for that city. And of course, that's a reference to Judgment Day. Verse 13. Here we have the word, uai, woe to you, Chorazin, repeated, woe to you, Bethsaida, because if in Tyre and Sidon had occurred, had happened, the mighty works which occurred in you, Pali, long ago, and then we'll go to the verb here at the end, metanoison, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes sitting. So to repeat that last portion, long ago they would have repented sitting in sackcloth and ashes. All right, then going on to verse 14. But for Tyre and for Sidon, and then again we have this comparative, it will be more bearable in the judgment than for you. Verse 15, and you, Capernaum, now the word may here is used in questions which expect the answer no. And then we have also the verb, whoops, uh oh, this is a future passive. Will you be lifted up unto heaven? And then the last portion of verse 15, unto Hades. 
And then we have the verb katabino. This is a future. This would be translated, you will go down. But many commentaries uh, translate this, be brought down. So it's your choice as to how you want to translate that. Going on to verse 16. The one hearing you hears me. And the one, and then the verb here is atheteo, present participle, set aside or reject. And the one rejecting you rejects me. And the one rejecting me rejects the one sending me. Verse 17. Here we have at the beginning the verb hypostrepho. And the 72 returned metakaras with joy, saying, Lord Kai, even the demons, and then we have the verb hupotasso, passive, are subject to us. Some would translate that obey us. So either one. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18. And he said to them. Then we have the verb theoreo. This is an imperfect. I was seeing Satan as astropane, as lightning falling from heaven. Verse 19. Behold, I have given to you the authority to walk, to tread. And so we have the verb pateo, to walk on opheon, serpents, kai, scorpion, scorpions, and on all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. So the verb there at the end is adikeo, the future, which means to harm or do wrong, and nothing will harm you. Notice here the triple negative, so involving uden, and also u, and then me. And so this is emphatic, in no way, and nothing will in any way harm you. And then the final verse, 20. Plain, so this has been a key word throughout our text, but in this do not rejoice, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names have been written in heaven. So the verb there again at the end, egrapho, perfect passive, have been recorded, have been written in heaven. So thus far, the translation, and now just a few textual notes at the end. With regard to verse 1, and the debate there is the number 70 or 72. The manuscript evidence is about evenly divided. And perhaps 72 is original, but later copyists introduced 70. Why? To match Moses choosing 70 elders in Numbers chapter 11. Now, these are 72 other disciples apart from the 12. These notes I'm giving to you, by the way, are for the most part from Arthur Just's commentary on Luke. Also in verse 1, two by two, Jesus is fulfilling the Old Testament requirement that two witnesses are necessary if there is to be any judging. And judging comes up, as we have seen in Luke chapter 10, verses 10 through 15. With regard to verse 4, the command not to greet anyone along the way. This indicates the single-mindedness the disciples must have on their mission. Now in verse 9, the verb egizo is followed by epi and the accusative, and that happens only here in the New Testament. Again, in verse 12, the reference to that day is a reference to Judgment Day. In verse 13, we had the woe statements. And woe statements are found, of course, in the Old Testament. 
And these indicate that the person stands under the judgment of God. In verse 18 occurred the name Satan. And this is the first time that Luke used Satan for the devil. Up to now, he has used the word devil. And also, we had the verb falling in verse 18. And the use of the aorist participle ensures that the reference is to a final fall and not some temporary reversal. And finally, a brief comment concerning verse 20 and what we saw there about what the disciples were to rejoice over. Pride and a theology of success would be tools Satan could use to attack them and thwart true ministry. So Jesus reminds them that their focus must be on the heavenly gift of grace. Salvation by God's grace through faith in the Messiah. May the Lord bless your working on this text and your preaching of it. God's blessings to you.